Welcome to the Midwest, home to miles and miles of cornfields and small towns as far as the eye can see, where it's so flat that you can watch your dog run away for two weeks. No, 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 just kidding. While it's true that the Midwest is abundant in cornfields and is pretty flat, it's still important to note and understand that the term Midwest describes an area of land that's more than what people would typically think about when they hear someone mention the Great Plains. In reality, the Midwest has many types of geographical features, from lakes to creeks, from peninsulas to plateaus, as it is such a vast region and encompasses so much land. And that provides an excellent segue to our first slide, location. The Midwest refers to a large area of land located near the middle of the United States. Precisely speaking, with our definition of regions, the geographic center of the Midwest is actually closer to the East Coast than to the West Coast, yet it's still called the Midwest and not the Mideast. Part of the reason why is that when this land was acquired a long time ago, it was actually the westernmost part of the United States at that time. People didn't know about the states like Colorado, Arizona, and California since they didn't exist back then. Years later, when those states finally came into existence, they became the West and the Midwest, which was once called the West, became the Midwest. I hope that wasn't too confusing. In addition, the Midwest, being located in the middle of the United States, makes it an important region connector. It connects the eastern states with the western states and links Canada to the southern states. Speaking of states, the states in this region include North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Iowa, Minnesota, Missouri, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Kentucky, and Ohio. And some of the largest cities in this region are Chicago, Illinois, Columbus, Ohio, Indianapolis, Indiana, Louisville, Kentucky, and Milwaukee, Wisconsin. After learning about the political geography of the Midwest, let's move on to the physical geography. First up, mountain ranges. Wait, but the Midwest doesn't have any mountain ranges, right? That's actually not true. One example of this is the Ozark Mountains, which are located in southwestern Missouri. Another example of this are the Black Hills in South Dakota, where you would travel to if you wanted to see Mount Rushmore and the Midwest's tallest mountain. Lastly, there are even mountain ranges in Minnesota, such as the Sawtooth Mountains on the northern shore of Lake Superior. As mentioned on the previous slide, the Black Hills in South Dakota contain the region's tallest peak, which is Black Elk Peak, with an elevation of 7,242 feet. Just a fun fact, but Black Elk Peak isn't just the highest point in the Midwest, it's the highest mountain east of the Rockies. Now that's impressive. Now, let's move on to rivers, where things get interesting. Rivers have incredible importance to the Midwest for many reasons. First, the watersheds of these rivers provides good irrigation for growing crops. Secondly, the river system of the Midwest has served as a fishery providing abundant amounts of fish. And thirdly, these rivers have served as major transportation routes for hundreds of years. An example of this would be the Lewis and Clark expedition, where the explorers traveled along the Missouri River. The three main rivers in this region are the Mississippi River and its two largest tributaries, the Missouri River and the Ohio River. The Mississippi River is perhaps the most important river in the whole country. It's 2,318 miles long and flows through or past 10 states. The Missouri River is the longest tributary of the Mississippi River, and the confluence of these two rivers is located at the city of St. Louis. Finally, the Ohio River is another long river, which originates near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and meets up with the Mississippi River at the southern tip of Illinois. Some smaller but nonetheless important rivers in the Midwest include the Platte River, the largest tributary of the Missouri River, the Illinois and St. Croix River, which are two tributaries of the Mississippi River, and the Kentucky River, which is a tributary of the Ohio River. The Midwest is also famous for having a lot of lakes, but I think I'll just talk about a few of the big ones. The Great Lakes, shown right here, are obviously very important. In total, there's five lakes which you can memorize with the mnemonic HOMES. This handy mnemonic stands for Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. Lake of the Woods is another large lake on the border between Minnesota and Canada, and Lake Sakakawea, shown right here, and Lake Oahe, right here, are two large man-made lakes on the Missouri River. 
Other lakes in this region include Red Lake, Devil's Lake, Lake Winnebago, and Mill Wax Lake. Moving on to peninsulas. Normally, it would be hard to talk about peninsulas when your region doesn't border the ocean. But luckily for the Midwest, you have the Great Lakes, which are practically inland oceans of their own. The Upper Peninsula of Michigan is arguably the most important and notable peninsula in the region. A lot of people think it's part of Wisconsin. Cough, cough, Mountain Dew. However, in reality, it's actually part of Michigan. On another note, it's the largest inland peninsula in the country and one of the largest inland peninsulas on the planet. Other peninsulas in this region include the Door Peninsula, which juts out into Lake Michigan, and the Keweenaw Peninsula, which is a peninsula on the Upper Peninsula and extends into Lake Superior. The three most important islands of this region are once again, you guessed it, in the Great Lakes. Isle Royale is probably the most famous, since it's also a national park and ridiculously hard to get to, might I add. It's the fifth largest lake island in the world. Two other islands of lesser importance include Drummond Island and Beaver Island. Both islands are pretty remote, and as you can imagine, traveling to these islands are tough and is usually done by ferry. Our last section for physical geography is bays, sounds, and gulfs. One very important bay in this region is the Saginaw Bay, which creates Michigan's glove shape as shown here. Green Bay is a bay that you might have heard of since it shares its name with the famous football city that's adjacent to it. Finally, Keweenaw Bay is a bay in Lake Superior, which shares its name with the Keweenaw Peninsula, which I believe I have mentioned earlier. Well, that'll do it for this video, and I hope you now realize that the Midwest is so much more than what people often expect it to be.